Hello and welcome to the Argyle CFO Leadership Forum. My name is Brittany Sullivan with Argyle and it's great to have everyone joining us today. A couple of notes before I turn things over to our esteemed speaker. To ask questions throughout the session, simply type into the Q&A chat and we will address your questions at the end of the session. Now, without further delay, I would like to introduce our speaker, Miller Zhang, Group fp &A Manager at ABD. We are excited to have Miller with us for a keynote titled, Finance Automation, Improving Processes for a Successful Journey. Welcome Miller and over to you. Thank you, Brittany. Thanks for the invitation and welcome to today's presentation. My focus is gonna be on practical approach uh, throughout the analytics journey. I'm gonna be sharing two um, case studies. So I'll start with introduction myself and ABB. Then we're gonna have a look at the uh, big picture of uh, analytics journey where it's coming from different steps along the way from hindsight to prescribed prescriptive analytics and we'll discuss also the success factors as part of practical approach and then we're going to head into um, case study number one more automating the traditional processes and then case study number two it's going to be beyond finance processes born to the operational side of things but yet it's going to um, support and enhance the FPNA processes as well. Um, and then last but not least, we're going to summarize, summarize everything so that you can get started. Um, before I go into introduction, I'd like to ask a question. Um, who are with us in the audience today? We're going to have a poll from Brittany. Um, Brittany, let me know if you already asked a question in the chat. Yep, we are posing the, the polling question to the entire group, if you guys don't mind taking a moment to answer that. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Brittany. Um, so start off with myself. Uh, my name is Miller Zhang. I'm Chinese Canadian. I work in the US office, uh, our regional office. Um, my current role is performance analysis manager at ABB Corporate. Um, our headquarters is actually in Switzerland. Um, and I think most of the audience today is from the U.S. Uh, region, right, so America's region. Uh, my background is 12 years in finance, audit, M&A, and business analytics. So a little bit of mixture of operational um, M uh, learnings as well as uh, finance and also, but more importantly, today's topic, right, uh, analytics. Um, I have an educational background in business analytics. I have a master's uh, from Duke and bachelor's in accounting and finance. I'm also a charter financial analyst. So it, it does blend well the different uh, learnings that I have and also experience to um, come to the uh, improvement in our uh, corporate f &A for as part of uh, digital transformation. My passion is to build useful solutions for business teams. And, and I put my contact there if you have any questions afterwards, uh, happy to connect. ABB, um, we're an electrical and automation company. Uh, we also manufacture uh, products and uh, we also have projects uh, that's ongoing as well as services and digital businesses. Uh, we are uh, across the globe, 100 countries, 100,000 employees, and most importantly, um, top line revenue is uh, $29 billion. I'd like to share a quote to start off with. Um, basically tells me, if I tell you something, you might forget. If I, today I'm gonna show you something, you'll remember. And of course, uh, involve yourself uh, going forward so that you can actually learn for yourselves. Um, on the big picture, uh, it's never too late to start from the basics, right? Um, you can see that um, there are different stages. And also, I would classify them as sort of descriptive uh, in the hindsight, more historical. Um, insights, it's more diagnostic. You're looking at data and you're, you're finding exceptions, alerts, and also uh, performances, trends. And then afterwards, you head towards uh, foresight, uh, which is predictive. Uh, you're using machine learning, scenario analysis, trade-off simulations uh, in order to come to uh, some sort of um, outcome or predicted outcome that maybe you have uh, a fan of outcomes, maybe the base case scenario, a worst case scenario, and best case scenario that you can always do from um, foresight. And then last but not least, artificial intelligence or amplified intelligence. Uh, that piece, it's a little further out than what I'm used to, um, 
of course, uh, that's the ultimate goal, right? Um, so this is the big picture. Uh, we start off from the hindsight and then we head towards uh, the insights. Today, we're gonna be sharing two business cases that's gonna be mainly focused on um, company performance visibility and second study case is gonna be focused on pushing exceptions and alerts to improve operational and commercial um, processes. And, and I'm more uh, in the opinion that um, all of this is learned through practice. And uh, from my experience, I have five factors, success factors I like to focus on today. And we'll actually value each of uh, the business case studies to see uh, which one is actually the success factor that we have captured in engaging with the businesses and also the customer, right? Uh, first and most uh, um, is the agile uh, approach, right? Um, your focus is not only on, let's say, finance, if the demand is actually looking into, hey, how do I solve this issue from an operational standpoint? Um, and of course, that's if that's within your scope um, or your scope is not defined, then you should actually go out there and meet the demand, business demand. Uh, next thing is economical, stay you know cheap, uh, stay fast. So leverage existing data lakes and repurposing some existing analytic solutions, um, but also providing self-servicing analytics. Modular, small, compact, and then you build more complexity and functionality then scale them up. Stay flexible, obviously. You gotta be flexible in today's environments, right? And business owned, that's the most important for me, I've found, uh, you'll see later why that is the case. I pause here. Um, Brittany, is your um, an outcome or results from our polling? Yep, so we did ask the audience, who is in the audience? 35% are CFOs, 10% vice presidents of finance and or vice presidents of FP&A, 20% senior director of finance and or FP&A, 25% FP&A managers, and 10% analytics managers. Perfect, thanks a lot. So um, we're gonna keep it a little high level, but also some uh, frameworks to go with it, right? So first case study, basically we're automating traditional finance processes, flash reporting. You're all very familiar with this, right? Flash reporting is a little bit talking about descriptive insights, uh, what happened, and then a little bit of uh, also value adding qualitative comments, right? And this has to be quick. It's a snapshot of the performance. So we, as part of my team, uh, we value coming into, I was actually, uh, recently joined the current role, but prior to that, it was more operational analytics as part of FP&A. So as this, you have to do process mapping. So we actually engage the businesses. Remember the success factors, business owned, business led, right? So we engage uh, with the people who are preparing this. So it's as part of FP&A teams and the analysis team, um, they, they need to sit together with us and to understand what are the requirements. And as you can see here, it's merging financial management data and providing insights and then output is flash reporting. Now, uh, the question goes, how do we get started? We get started by identifying bottlenecks and automation opportunities, as well as, um, you know, can we generate some of the uh, qualitative and quantitative insights through automated fashion? Um, last but not least, what is the digital solution? So this is an example, probably looks familiar to you. Uh, some, some of you do better and some of you uh, probably, um, you know, more manual, but this is the, how it looks, how to, well, first we got there, right? The outcome is the flash report, but how to get there is really messy. Then we did value stream mapping. So throughout this process, we identified four different actions with the bottlenecks identified multiple files linked. You have to merge all of this into a digital platform. We'll do it once and for all, make it efficient, right? The second piece is centralized inputs where all the businesses, uh, all the fp &A leaders in the businesses, as well as, um, you know, division um, uh, presidents, or if they have any inputs on big project, big order intake or profitability hit, they would put that into a centralized platform. And, and thirdly, communication by having this everything 
in a centralized place, you have standardized solutions, standardized requirements, easily accessible, especially remote working these days, right? Last but not least, um, this is something for the future, but we're already experimenting with it uh, a little bit, which is smart narratives in some of the uh, uh, tools and, and digital solutions that we have been using. Um, I move on from identifying the problem, what approach we take, and now into solutions. And the solution that we have come up with is actually not just one-to-one. -one. It's actually understanding the objective and say, okay, what are we trying to do? So we said, okay, let's split trend analysis and KPIs on one side, which is performance scorecard. It's more descriptive. You look at it, you combine ratios, you see it, and then it's, it's actually self-explanatory. The second piece is about indicative flash reporting. Um, this is also flash reporting, right? So this gets refreshed timely, uh, real, real live data. And a lot of the comments and, and drivers coming from different businesses or customers can be reflected here. Um, and next step after this, actually we're thinking about um, getting more external uh, data to potentially forecast out information. Um, and while we're doing this, we're also thinking about, hey, how can we minimize time on both sides if they want something more ad hoc? So we, we actually started with self-servicing analytics. There's more flexibility, right? You can actually combine different KPIs and you select them and you can see the trends and more descriptive, definitely, um, and patterns. And then uh, on the right-hand side is a little bit of experiment that we've been doing. So getting all this input sort of uh, from a bottom-up uh, input for forecasting, we put that into a, uh, um, a database and we're able to visualize forecasting out two, three, four quarters out to, so that they can actually select and also the parameters from top top down approach where you have assumptions, right? GDP, uh, growth, inflation, and so on and so forth. So this is something that's been fun. It hasn't been uh, um, uh, published, but we're working on this and that's something I wanted to share with you. So uh, sum all this up, um, time is flying, flying very fast. So sum all this up, um, you know, what are the success factors that we have witnessed? So first of all, it's business owned. A lot of the people that uh, think there's a lot of resisting uh, resistors in the business is because you're not trying to understand their challenges. So once they're in the room with you, they explain to you what are the challenges, right? And here is bottlenecks, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, manual work, whether it's inconsistent input from businesses, we solve their problem by solving the overall problem, right? So it has to be business owned. Then we also approached it modular. We started with flash reporting, but we also provide a KPI summary. We also provide a service, uh, uh, self-servicing analytics. And, and also very interestingly, we also were thinking about next step, which is predictive forecasting. Um, last but not least, money and time. It was really fast. We came up with this within a month and we were able to leverage the existing data lakes and repurposing some of the existing solutions. So keeping that in mind, we saw a benefit of 75% of the flash reporting effort has been eliminated um, because we were able to solve the issues that, of having bottlenecks, reduce manual errors, and provide more clarity uh, on business insights. So I pause here for the first case study. Uh, it went by really fast. Brittany, how am I doing on time? Good, yes, we have about 15 minutes left. And Miller, we did have, after that first case study, a couple questions. Sure. Um, this first question asks, what obstacles do FP&A teams face when process mapping and how can teams overcome these obstacles? Right, so process mapping, it's, it's uh, let me go back to this, right? Um, I think you gotta, you got to try, it's try on the error a little bit because everybody is sort of specialized now these days. If you have a big company, one cash leader, they're familiar with cash, right? With that process, reporting process. One person's top line, they're really focused on that particular topic. And then another person may be profitability, um, talking about productivity ratios uh, with, with other KPIs. One thing is to gather everybody and you also have to be involved witnessing them maybe a month, two months of closing, then you truly, you follow data, take an example or take a sample 
just like an audit, right? My audit background plays a role here. Go through it. Try to understand, get yourself involved. And, um, and it doesn't have to be extensive. Hey, everybody stop what you're doing. Just follow through in terms of using that one sample and then you can map it yourself. And later on, everybody gets in the same room and then you are able to come up with a, a valid and accurate uh, process map. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, perfect, Miller. And we do have one other question before we move on. Um, mm -hmm. What processes should finance teams focus on automating first? That's a very uh, good question. Um, so, so actually, I, I even think about bigger terms, right? In terms of, I, in my mind, there are four critical things in order to make an automation or analytics uh, successful, right? First thing is data consistency in data. So data, data management. The second thing is about, uh, you know, having the people wanting to get involved in the process. And the third thing is about process. So which critical process, it's, it's the first thing that comes in mind or the first thing that's on the, your CFO, CEO, business leaders agenda, right? So that's something also drives what determines what, what's important for you, right? And, and thirdly, it's about, um, so you have the, uh, the data, the people, the process, and the system. Is, is your system able to handle that? I mean, you can talk about priorities, but if your system is not able to handle that, just like we have here, reporting to number one, reporting to number two, um, and so on and so forth, and, and manual process. So the first thing what we did was we, we try to gather all this, and it wasn't a lot. But if you look at the business, it's sort of a large corporation, you have, let's say, forecasting orders out, you need this management data from the local ERP systems or local add-on uh, systems. So are you able to do that? So I think you have to think from a sort of a collective approach. Um, I hope that I answer the question there. And this is a bit more uh, open-ended answer also, right? But we can definitely connect afterwards if you're interested to talk more. Perfect, Brittany, thanks Miller. Yep. Can... Those are all yep. the questions for this section, thank you. Perfect. Thanks a lot, everyone. Um, so the second one is a little bit more interesting uh, for me because it actually dives deeper by even two levels, I would say. The first one is the corporate level. You have FP&A, big trends, um, where we're headed. Uh, and then the second layer is a little bit more at the, the business area or the business portfolio level. And the third, thirdly, you have the third level where it's a little bit more into the business, right? How do I actually improve the business in order to get more uh, efficient processes, in order to get more accurate prediction of the future on a certain topics like, let's say, cash? Um, so I want to also, again, go back to the success factors, right? Business owned, engaging the business, engaging the customer, right? Um, while staying agile, you approach them by um, asking, what are the business objectives? Right. And we, we started by saying that, you know what, we can provide any sort of tailored made solution. If you look at here and we will also provide actionable insights. And and then you set up some targets that the business wants to see how much of the business has been covered. I want top line improvement of such in certain units and that all of this needs to be um, discussed and agreed with the customer and see what they want to do. Right. Um, so, so this is something that you can think about uh, when you engage with the business. And I wanna move a little bit more into the, the framework, rollout timelines. And here's what we do in terms of what we did in the business. And we, we did this for, I did this for two and a half years with a team of six people around the world. And we engage business by having a kickoff workshop, you know, um, talking to management team first, getting support. And this is a little bit more bigger effort than the previous one, right? Uh, here, you're really mo mobilizing quite a bit of resources and the people's time. Um, and the most important part for me, I think the learning that I got was brainstorming development. Brainstorming, you try to understand the business model, process and system. Linking this back to what, what I said earlier about you know, flash reporting. Flash reporting is not just about reporting. It's about understanding what does the business leaders wants to see. And here's the same thing. If you go into a business that's more product business and you would like to understand how the business model is set up, 
in order to identify bottlenecks, in order to identify, you know, uh, process to improve, and also what are the drivers that, that would help you if you improve them, they will help your forecasting model. And last but not least here, I think what's important is also um, customer feedback and also on assigning ownership on particular items that's, let's say, on the analytics that you see, hey, I need to take action here, then that's going to help me to uh, support my forecast or planning an uh, actual results analysis. Uh, so this is something you can, hopefully you can take away today as a practical approach. Let me move on um, to, to the next one, which is um, a particular example. I have a few examples that I brought in sales backlog management, right? Uh, here, really, it's, it's more practical. What are the items that delivered? How do I forecast out? Is this accurate? A lot of times, you know, SNOP planning, that's the essence or that's the base of the bottom up input in forecasting on order backlog, right? You, you, you want to know where you're at, but a lot of time what you see is FPNA teams, they don't really talk to the supply chain teams. The supply chain teams are not really connected with warehouse management, right? So here, what we do is we provide a third level or sort of deep diving in the third level of, of sales order backlog management. And we're able to take this data and feed it back to the forecasting, forecasting process. And, and people actually can use this at the same time also to improve their processes. Um, I think that's what I wanted to share with, the, uh, with you on, on these topics. Um, another example of it, um, billing process, revenue recognition. Um, another one is about supervised learning. Uh, we also experiment with identify duplicate payments. Um, and um, this is an example that we have is basically, this is machine learning, right? Supervised machine learning. And what we do is every time we identify something, a business person would be assigned to it and they would provide feedback. And they would say, hey, this is confirmed, not confirmed or false positive. Once it's confirmed and you're teaching your, 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 your um, ML, so sort of machine learning model to get better at it because you're, you're confirming the, the positive, positive one and, and get rid of the uh, false positive one. That will help you to get better with your, your um, uh, model, hence, you know, uh, supervised learning. Um, I think we're coming to time. So I, I want to summarize everything uh, into uh, on the second case study, which is, you know, for me, I think a lot of us think in terms of analytics, FP&A, you know, you know, we're more mostly focused on uh, forecasting, business analysis, uh, scenario planning, biz, you know, uh, business driver analysis. Uh, but I would say I would also challenge that a little bit, right? And if you can sort of employ uh, what we did here, when business has a demand, there's a reason for it. And by solving at the root cause, you will get a lot better on certain topics um, at, the, at the at sort of corporate level or at the top uh, business uh, team level. So in success factor here, what I found was being agile. So we heard them, uh, we, we provide a solution beyond AR cash forecasting, because they turn into customer analysis, OTD, payment terms, and order management analytics, which I shown you earlier. Stay flexible. One uh, you know, solution can be repurposed, can be reutilized if you understand the business objective. And thirdly, why well, should be the first uh, priority actually always involve the business. They have to own it to take action. And this is the uh, conclusion for the second case study. I just want to get back to the original um, analytics journey. How do you get started? I would say um, it, you know, it doesn't have to be 100% or, you know, my data is 100% consistent. You know, I, I have to have 100% accuracy and completeness in my local ERP and then going to my business warehouse and so on and so forth. Actually, why, why not get started with a pilot on, on creating insights? You know, whether it's performance, more descriptive, if you can, um, you know, and combine that with a little bit of help from operational commercial drivers uh, using operational analytics. And I, I would, you know, if you don't take away anything else today, I would say, think about the smart, smart automation that I mentioned, about the five success factors, and engage the customer, and understanding the business objective so you can get started. 
thanks a lot for listening today. Um, I was quite rushed at the end, but I hope uh, I've shared some insights today. And if you have any questions, uh, I open the floor for questioning. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Miller, for such an insightful keynote. As a reminder, audience members can still enter any other questions they have now, and we'll go ahead and review some, some of the ones that came through. Um, Miller, this question asks, is there ever any pushback from teams when trying to automate manual processes? Yes. And um, I can give you an example, right? Let's say, for example, like order management. Um, I think there's a couple of factors and what we found was basically um, their job security. Let's, let's also be open about it. Job security, they're worried about it. Uh, second piece is about capabilities of navigating the new tool or a new technology. Um, and, you know, there are also other factors. Um, they would say something along the lines of this is too complex, we can't really automate it. But I would say, um, try to understand what their challenges are. What, what exactly do they uh, see as, as an issue? And if you can help them solve those issue and involve them in the process and let them run the analytics a little bit and then get them involved more, validating either you know a, a model that you have validating a particular case something that uh, inside that maybe they could not generate in the past because when you have four different systems in the past it's all by you know um, manual or, or human sort of intelligence right capturing the differences inconsistencies or consistencies across tools so have them involved uh, uh, to understand what their challenges are and still together, then you can achieve business objectives, right? I hope that I answered the question. Perfect, thank you. Um, Miller, this next question asks, what are the biggest setbacks when implementing new automation tools or technologies? What is the big biggest setback? Hmm. Good question. Um, I would say overall, I, I've seen more benefit than setbacks. Um, but one thing maybe I can mention and to be also just thinking out loud together with you, right, um, is that it could be that you're wasting more time and effort on, on figuring out um, whether this solution is accurate, relevant, applicable or not when your data is not consistent, your data quality is bad. So that that's actually um, has happened in some um, you know, projects I've seen in the past five years um, that you can overcome by ensuring from, you know, have a better data prep, um, have a better approach in terms of validating it. Um, but that's that's one of the setbacks I've seen is that people work six months and later on realize this, hey, you know what, it's not working because fundamentally our, our tools, our ERP systems are, are consistent in terms of master data or, or transactional data. So that's something I can think about, but happy to connect afterwards if you have any thoughts. Um, would be happy to learn about other setbacks that, you, setbacks that you have experienced. Great, thank you. And it looks like we have time for one last question. Um, this question asks if you can make any predictions as to how automation will evolve over the next two years. Uh, Hard to say, right? Hard to say. <laughs> I mean, if you made a prediction in 2019, no one would say, you know, uh, Zoom uh, uh, company would explode, right? Because we're all working from home. Um, but I, I would have to say that, you know, we are here. So we're on, in the insight generation piece. And some of us, um, I guess the people who are more keen on this and have the capacity and the resources, bigger companies or tech companies are, are really use, utilizing machine learning and, and scenario planning. Um, I would have to say, I'm not entirely sure if we're gonna get to uh, artificial intelligence completely. Um, uh, for an example, like uh, autonomous driving, right? There's definitely ethical questions uh, to, to, be, to be asked here, um, but more, more specifically to us, FPNA, I do think instead of calling AI artificial intelligence, I think we're going to get to a point where it's going to be called augmented 
intelligence. So they're going to make predictions. Uh, they're going to give you prescriptions of a set of recommendations. Still, humans need to come in, experts, domain experts, um, you know, a business leader has, still has to come in and say, hey, I want to choose this one. I want to choose that one or a combination of the two, right? So um, in the next two years, I do think we're moving towards that. I'm not too sure if we can mimic human decision process yet. Um, that is my take. Of course, uh, there's uh, for sure uh, more advanced technologies and more um, intelligent person out there that has different predictions. Thanks for the question. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much again, Miller, for such an incredible keynote presentation. I also want to thank everyone who joined us today. This session, along with all of today's content, will be made available on demand following the event. Thank you again, Miller. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.